Upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards, invite you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock, every Sunday, 4 p.m. on Tobago Inspirational Network. Yes, this is your friend Bishop Basil Edwards. I'm happy to be in your presence. Of course, this COVID-19 would have had a lot of us uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way that we more or less somehow scared or sorry to deal with the, th the issues that are before us. But I know that there is something greater more dangerous or far dangerous than this COVID-19. And the reason why they call it COVID-19 because they, they would have actually get as much into information they would have got to say that it started around 2019. And now we are in 2000, we are 2020. So then they say COVID-19 pandemic, meaning that it's a disease that is out there, not now, but out there for a little while. But may I say to you today, I'm not here, I'm not here to speak about COVID-19. I'm here to speak about um, who is your neighbor. And I'm only using the reference to what Jesus used in Luke 10 and verse 30. And Jesus take him up, reply, a certain man was going from Jerusalem down to Jericho. And he fell among robbers or thieves who stripped him of his clothes and the other thing that they did they stripped him of his clothes and his belonging and beat him and went their way leaving him right half dead so they injure him and leaving him half dead as it happened now by a, it's, it's now given us understanding say, the concubine of a certain priest okay i don't understand why they call him that but a certain priest was going down along that road and when he saw him he passed by on the other side and levi's likewise came down to the place and saw him and passed on the other side of the road but a certain samaritan as he traveling along came down to where he was and when he saw him he was moved with pity and what empathy for him and when he and when to him and dressed his wounds pouring on him the oil and the wine then he set him on his own beasts and brought him to an inn and took care of him and the next day he took out two penny two penny worth of acts at least maybe then just a day wages this would have been a half a year wages that he would have took out at that time and gave to them to the to the inn to keep this man saying take care of him and whatsoever more you spend i myself will repay you and he went on his way amen as in luke 10 i read up to verse 35. now for jesus to speak this parable if you read a few verses earlier, you will understand why this parable was spoken. They say a parable is an earthly saying with a heavenly meaning, meaning that it's a true saying. And the question before that Jesus would have used this statement is that this rich young man came to him and asked him about the Torah or the law. And Jesus would have said to him, certain of the scriptures or the Torah that he would have mentioned to him and he said Lord from my youth up I have done that 
and you understand very clearly but for him to justify himself then the question was asked who is my neighbor and Jesus now would have used that particular scripture in that context to show him who was his neighbor he said there was this gentleman who was traveling from Jericho or from Jerusalem to Jericho he was traveling in an area that where the thieves and the bandit were using those particular um, villages between villages to ply their bandits on and as a result of that the Bible said that he fell among the thieves they stripped him they beat him they take everything away from him and leave him half dead meaning that the man who they beaten and stripped he was helpless he could not have helped himself every strength was lost in him he could not have even get up to take a mile or two journey that means that that man in that condition he needed help and the help was so needed in such a wonderful way that Jesus isn't speak about two different character two important person in society that would have been passing that way that would that was supposed to help but they did not help the Bible say the first one that passed was the priest what is the function and the purpose of a priest the function and the purpose of a priest is to make sure the Torah God words is being taught to the people who need all information for growing process the priest function is to show a level of compassion to those that are in need this man was not just in need but he needed someone to help him of his situation that he was involved in remember the, the guy who was traveling down between Jericho to Jerusalem he didn't expect such calamity to take place but what happened he had a mandate to travel from one place to another place whether he was flying in trade or he was going home and because of that he needs to go that route the priest also needed was to go that route and the Bible said when he saw him he went on the other side meaning that he was not a man of compassionate he was for himself he was more about him than the man who was wounded questions today are we as ministers and as priests are we for ourselves or we care for those that are wounded the Bible said he gave us shepherd rods and shepherd hearts that we must, that we must care for the sheep that he has given to us a passage of scripture in the book of John chapter 21 you will understand very clearly when Jesus spoke to Peter what was some of the questions he asked me Peter do you love me more than these fishes and the bread that you have just eat and he said yes yes Lord I know feed my sheep and then the other verse said in the latter part of that verse find it in chapter 21 of John he said do you love me more than sheep he said yes Lord you know I love you feed my lambs and then the third time he asked the question and the Bible said Peter was very much annoyed he was angry that Jesus asked him the same question but the question was to deal with his inner with his soul body soul and spirit to see if you really get the message some of us as ministers and I'm not just I'm saying some of us we as minister we need to know if we really care for the people of God that he has given us in charge of we need to care for the people that God has given us you see people are not our slaves people are not anything else but the people that God has given us with to walk with and we must understand that we must we must not treat God's people as slave the Bible tell us even with Moses 
he learned the lesson well when God tell him to speak to the rock he struck the rock and then calls God's people rebels let God do that not me are you are you hear me somebody and the Bible tells me very clearly that he called them rebels this priest has an opportunity to nurse a wounded man to help a wounded man to sustain a wounded man until he can get back on his feet but he walk on the other side condition for me in that condition in that particular position the priest would have hold he was too proud he had too many pride he was selfish he did not care about him but he cared about himself and that's not a level of compassion a level of compassion open the doors where we can care for those that are less fortunate are you hearing me somebody today amen so the priest would have done a good job but it was negligent it was an area in his life that he should have been able to fulfill but where God is concerned where Jesus is concerned he have failed it, his test and these are the ones that were supposed to be in the, the temple that's why Jesus used the priest and the Levi the priest is known as the high priest that's the one that can be used once per year the Levites were the one who's supposed to take care of the priests and the temple and the things of God in the temple so God used Jesus used the priest first and then he used the Levi the Levi did the same thing there was no compassionate for a wounded man sometimes I ask myself the questions we as leaders if we become too complacency or if we become too selfish or if all we think about me myself and I sometimes I ask myself the question if we are doing justice as men of God to the things of God when a man can call a, a, a member of his church stupid I remember one time my brother told me something he went to a church somewhere in Tanapuna or Arima and he said a lady slept in the church and the minister had a belt and he flogged her and I was, I was mostly distraught by that because what a member of your church is not your child and may I say to us many of us as ministers may think our members is our children so we can treat them as we want we cannot even treat our children like that because they they will stand up man to man with us so the Levi passed by and did nothing about it because he was too concerned or full of himself but the Bible tells me a Samaritan who has nothing to do with the, the, the holistic of that environment of priestly holder or Levi said but was just doing service as a good Samaritan the Bible say a good Samaritan meaning that among the Samaritan you may have had bad Samaritans too but a good one a Samaritan is a half Jew but a good one why can the Bible say that a good priest or a good Levi because the priest was supposed to do that job the Levi was supposed to do that job not the Samaritan a good Samaritan had passed and see him and had compassion on him and that's the word that we need to be carried as minister the word compassion we have to have more compassion in the churches today we are full about ourselves compassion means that we must see about the needs of the people and the Bible said there is a difference in a matter of fact through the Bible we will learn the difference between a leader and a boss in the churches today we need not to have bosses but we need to have leaders a pastor must be a leader a pastor must be an under shepherd as a leader not as a boss a leader will say let's do it together what I understand the, the, the definition of a leader is one that have the ability to obtain follower a leader must lead people 
not boss them not destroy them this Samaritan man he took him he threw in the oil and the wine and he healed the wounds he placed him on his own horse or on his own donkey and walk him to the inn because they both couldn't ride at the same time I believe this Samaritan came off his donkey put him across lie down strap him down on the donkey so he would not fall a second time and take him to an end and the Bible said within two days he stayed with him make sure he did all that he could have done make sure that everything was okay with him make sure that he was in a better condition as the healing process start taking place and that's what I love about Jesus he makes sure he stay with us stay in place with us so our healing can take place our heart can be healed mentally emotionally physically and spiritually if we are living next to our neighbor and we cannot show compassion and while we are in love ahead with our neighbors and we often use the statement that he always gives trouble but what about you sometime it started off with you as your as the one who's supposed to set the example as Christians we supposed to set the example we're not supposed to be throwing words we're not supposed to be craving our neighbor's land I don't understand how it is so ironic in the sense that you put your, your pose exactly at your bung and then you're going beyond your fence to go and clean your fence that can't be right you are trespassing on somebody's land if you want to do that put your land at two feet in from your bung so you can have access between your neighbor yard and yours to clean your fence because you would have been in your right at your bung to clean your fence but don't tell me you put it exactly by the bung and then you're over by the neighbor yard and trying to clean your yard and if you never tell you about it you want to beat him for what belongs to him that is not good neighboring living that is that is covetousness that is wickedness that is greed stay within your boundary a good neighbor is one that fend for his neighbor a good neighbor is one that loves their neighbors I remember as a little boy living in the village of Lekito. I am an Lekitonian. And we live, my uncle across there. My other, other great uncle is on this side. My father is in the center. We have neighbor above. And everything we have as a little boy, we got to share. When food comes into the place, you can see that he's saying, carry this for your for me, from brother. Carry this to the, and food always share because we have good neighbor in response to each other. It's important for us to do that as people of God. We have been losing our, our desire for neighboring um, behavior and pattern. We have lost the desire to how we treat our neighbors. And that's why Jesus has to let you know. And the question asks, who is my neighbor? It is not the closest person to you, but the person that you reach with in every day and that they are seeing your action, your behavior. That's what neighboring behavior or neighboring life look like when we can treat the person as we treat ourselves. So the wounding was taken care of. That compassionate that he would have given the Samaritan would have given to that man goes a long way why you see there are things in our house that money cannot help it and I'm speaking about husband and wife now that's not my topic not enough money in the house can be able to create an environment where your wife can love you the way she ought to not enough food the best chef to, you know how to cook and help her to love you not the big marriage ring that you would have given to her what a wife needs in the house is a good man who can love her in spite of not a man who will condemn her and i thank god for my wife a god for dylan edwards as a lover she's a beautiful woman and i'm saying to me again if i had to marry another person if i was to marry again a second time and i see a hundred times i would have we need to value the woman we have home and I want to stop you men. If you have compassionate for your wife, 
You will not compliment another woman and don't compliment your wife. The first compliment is your wife, not the woman that you don't know anything about. Don't get carried away with the flare and the pants they have on here. No. Not because they are able to compact themselves in a pants and they may look better than your wife. But let me say this to you. Your wife is always going to be your wife because no matter how she looks, it's you choose her. And that's where the concern is for me as a husband. Choose. Love what you choose. Deal with what you choose. Show appreciation to what you choose. And let me get back to my topic now. A man of compassionate will always meet the needs of those that need. A man who have love and appreciation will be able to help those that are wounded. Don't let a wounded soul that die. We all are soldiers in the body of Christ. Don't let a wounded soul that die because of your negligent. But let's continue to love them. Amen, somebody? Today, I, I want to let you know that God is a good God and He's a loving God. A good Samaritan is one that carry the fruit of the Spirit. Amen, somebody? Love helps to build. Today, I want to thank you very much for listening. And I want to pray for you who are struggling with love. I want to pray for you who don't know how to love your neighbor. I want to pray for you who always throw in words at your neighbor, not understanding that you may be the problem and not your neighbor. I want you to have a, a self-searching, so a soul-searching, and ask yourself the question, if your neighbor deserved that or if you deserve that as a neighbor. And if you are wrong, you are supposed to say to your neighbor, I'm sorry, forgive me. And let's live as human beings and not as beasts or animals. Amen, somebody? Today I lift our neighbors before you. Who is a good neighbor? But the one who show compassion. And mighty God, I lift neighbors before you who are living like hooligans, who are living like brute human, like animals. We are not animals, we are human beings. I pray that God, you continue to strengthen them. Those that are living like that. Remove the stigma. Remove the lies and the deceit. Remove every intention that is not of God. And place a love of compassion upon their hearts today. I pray God, in at this time, Lord, the powers that be before us, that has been rightly destroying our neighbors, destroying us as, a, as, as, as people who God wants us to walk in compassion. May you strengthen us today. May your will be done, O oh God. May your Holy Spirit take full control. Today, O oh God, I pray that the anointing that raised Jesus from the dead will rest upon us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Rest upon our neighbors. Rest upon us, O oh God. Let that spirit of compassion take us all over so we will be able to fulfill your purpose in the earth. Today, Lord, your blessings flows in spite of Touch them, minister to them, bless them. And today I, I thank you so much for listening to me today. Remember, this is Bishop Basil, as your friend. I love you very much. My intention is not to hurt you, but my intention is to bring you into a place of realization to recognize you have to have a Samaritan, a good Samaritan heart of compassion to reach those that are reachable. Amen, somebody? Amen, somebody? So we must understand where God is taking us today. Amen? The theme or my topic today, you must be a good Samaritan. Amen? So Jesus Christ can be all in all that he wants to be in your life. Amen? So the Lord bless you and the peace of God be with you today. Upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am Bishop Basil Edwards, invite you to join us right here on Tobago Inspirational Network every Sunday evening at 4 p.m. for the program Standing on the Rock. Together we will journey through the scriptures to have a better understanding of the Holy Word of God. Standing on the Rock, every Sunday. 4 p.m. 
on Tobago Inspirational Network.